This video is a detailed tutorial on Zoom, how to use Zoom, the different functions that are in Zoom. So let's begin. So here in Zoom, we have all the chat is here, the users that are connected, the participants that are connected are here. So if we open Zoom, you can send invite here so we can capture. As you can see here, we can copy invitation. Then we're going to open our notepad. So I am the host. So here I get the invitation. I have this. This is how people will join the Zoom meeting. We are going to send this to their WhatsApp or their email so that they are able to join the Zoom. So the students who are connected today, the, who are the participants, they have this invite. They receive this invite in their WhatsApp. So they joined the Zoom. All right. Or you can simply send this, the meeting ID here and the passcode. So we're going to click on Zoom as I showed in the previous video. But we're going to put the Zoom ID and then the password, passcode, so that they log in Zoom. All right. Now. Once they join in, they are going to be here. They, they are going to be in this list as soon as they join. So as you notice here, view, the speaker, you can see the speaker. I, I want to have a view of gallery like this, small windows. So this is the gallery view. So it's how you're going to see all the your students. So I don't have many students. That's why we have uh, only these window. So if we're going to have a lot of stu students, so lots of window will appear, small window. So as you take note, I have three person, three students who are you uh, two not two two students two students who are having webcam on, and I have. Three more who do not have any webcam. So that's why here you don't see anything unless they, they put the profile name or any picture. We might, that they allow us to see. But webcam is that. So if students do not want to log in or even if I didn't want to put my web, webcam on. So here you see, I'm just going to stop the video. To put the video on, I just click here, start video. Now, everyone has got a mic, mic, uh, but it's an earpiece. Yeah. You can buy an earpiece to connect any student. I think everyone, mostly those who are having smartphones these days, do have at least an earpiece, a earpiece, but a wired one or a wireless one, a Bluetooth one, so they can use to hear us. Now, and they can talk also through their own mic or their own PC devices. This is one thing. If I want to mute, let us say I'm the teacher, someone is coming to talk to me. I don't want my students to hear, hear them. So we have here the mute button. So I'm going to mute it here. I want to be back. I just click back and mute it. Okay. So here you see where I want my sound to go input uh, uh, here, which speaker I want to use. I have a lot of connections on my laptop. So based on what I want, which device I want to use to hear the students and to talk to the students, I'm using my headphones. All right. Now this is security, participants, chat. I want to chat with the students. So this is to everyone. I will say, let us say testing. Okay, Ali, les élèves, can you reply, one of you? Just put something there. Good, so you see a student here, Anaï, she's put hello here, Ashish put note, noted here. Now, if I want to send a message only to one of them, let's say I'm going to send to Jamil, a message only to her. Are you hearing me well? So this applies if I want to send a message to someone who cannot hear me. 
So I'm going to use the chat system. I'm going to type my message here and then the person is going to reply to me. Allez, une réponse de vous, Jamila? Good. So she replied to me a direct message. So whether you want to send to a group of people or just to a few of them, so this is how we're going to use it. All right. This is the second thing here. Uh, now, I want to, to show you another feature that's important. There is here breakout room. Breakout room means that uh, if I have several users, let us say we are teaching programming. We, don't, we have a batch of 15 students, but I want to give some group work to each one of them. So then I'm going to use a breakout room. So I use this feature. So here I'm going to create how many breakout room I want and how many, uh, that whether I'm going to let the participant choose the room or I'm going to assign manually, who are those students who are going to go in which room. And I'm going to give them each their own set of work. And I finally, they can come to the common room, back to the common room and discuss further. Next, we have, now I want my students to start to share their screen with me. As a teacher, I can share my own screen with them. Let's say I'm going to open a Word document here. This is my Word document. Now I want to hear, I'm typing anything. So I want to share this screen with my students. So let's just say I want to share the screen, share what I'm doing here. Okay, let's say I'm doing insert shapes. I want to share this. And I use this as a whiteboard to explain to students. So I have to share my screen. So to share my screen, I come to my Zoom here. Now, I'll come here, share screen. I can share my screen where they're going to view everything that's on my screen. If even I can, I'll be having a video. I have several applications that are open. They're going to be able to see everything as I go through. Or else I can only share the whiteboard. Or the document, I want to share the document that I've opened, Word, I just share, they are going to see only this part. They're not going to see the whole document. They are just going to see the Word where I'm doing my explanation. So that's what I use to do my explanation. Do another share. Full screen sharing, it's like this. So I'm going to see, when I'm going to do the full screen sharing, I'm going to see everyone here. And if I have to see more students, I just press uh, the arrow button, I go down, up, etc. These are the functionalities how we use in Zoom. Now, there is another thing I want to show you. If I want to record my whole session, then I'm going to record here. I click on record here. I want to record on this computer or on the cloud. At this time, I want to record on this computer. Recording in progress. So now the student also will see that uh, we have we are recording. They'll see the recording option. So they'll see REC written on their uh, on the interface, and then we'll see that it is being recorded. I've recorded on my computer. You can record it on the cloud, but on the cloud, we don't have a lot of space. That's why maybe one gigabit you can store. But uh, if you have space on your PC, you can store it on your PC or else on the cloud, then you download it from there and save it wherever you want on your drive. This is the recording process. Recording stopped. I've recorded on my computer. You can record it on the cloud. But on the cloud, we don't have a lot of space. That's why maybe one gigabit you can store. But uh, if you have space on your PC, you can store it on your PC. Or else on the cloud, then you download it from there and save it wherever you want on your drive. This is the recording process. Now, I want my students to share their screen with me. I've given them their, uh, some work, so we have to share their screen with me. 
actually share your screen? Miss Snowden. Public I'll share. Donc, he's not able to share because I have to enable this one. I can enable multiple participants can share. I'll do the advanced option. Who can share? If only the host, only me who is the host, I can share. Share. Or I want my trainees to be able to share their screen. Now, who can when someone else is sharing? Only host. That's good. Who can share all participants? If I want multiple participants can share simultaneously, this also you can do. Especially if you're doing a test, you can do this. Now, share screen. Ashish. Good, so here now, everyone can see us go with one abish? Yes, please. Very good. Show me your screen, Navish. Now, this is on Navish PC. So you see, Yashka Lisa, the PC is here. Now, we view the options. If I want to remotely access his PC, which we normally do if we're installing a software, or we want to show the person, in other, uh, go on the person's PC, the trainee's PC, to show, show the functions better. So then here we have a request remote control. All right. And then uh, if I want to see it smaller, I come here, zoom ratio 50%. So then it's going to come smaller. If I want it to be bigger, so this I can play with it to see it better. All right. I'll ask you to type something on your notepad, Navish. Right, I am enjoying the class. Enjoying the class or enjoying the class? Okay. <laughs> now, annotate. I can <clears throat> say, okay, this word I didn't say. I said enjoying and he wrote joining. So I can uh, use annotate to come and write on what's being shared. Now I want to remove it. I just say, undo it. Okay, I've undone what I have done. Good, so you can use this. You can write, use text to write. Wrong listening skills. Huh? <laughs> From anything, you can write, whatever. So I can write on the person what she's sharing. Because this is not my screen. This is being shared. If I want to stop a participant from sharing, I just stop it here. Good. So these are when you do to security, you can lock a meeting, hide profile pictures. For me, I've enabled waiting room. So that's why when people come in, I have to admit them. I love them. I admit them. We, can, we, we don't allow participants to rename themselves. So I can decide not to allow them to rename themselves. I can unmute themselves, I can mute them, unmute them, can remove participants, especially if their name is not written properly, in the, so you can decide to pop the user out of the Zoom video. Good, so I think, and then when we finish our meeting here, we'll say end meeting for all. If I just leave a meeting, all the students will stay there, so end meeting for all.